Jean Callas is one of the greatest all-rounders of all time and his legacy is one that will inspire future generations of cricketers for many years to come. And even though his stellar international career has come to an end, the former Proteus great is still giving back to the game through the Jean Callas Foundation. Established in 2004, the foundation aims to provide promising but less fortunate scholars the opportunity to attend leading schools that boast proud cricketing traditions as well as excellent educational structures. These schools include Maritzburg College, Selborne College, Pretoria Boys High and of course Jacques Alma Mater, Weinberg Boys High. In honour of all he has achieved on and off the field, the Weinberg All Boys Union, along with the Jacques Cullis Foundation, organised a glittering tribute dinner for one of South Africa's favourite sons. The night's festivities were preceded by a coaching clinic at Weinberg Boys High, with Cullis himself on hand to impart some invaluable knowledge to the young cricketers. You know, this game's given me so much pleasure, so I'd like to give something back and, and help especially youngsters, um, you know, to try and fulfil their potential and live their dreams out. It is enormous to have Jock Cullis here. You've got no idea how enthusiastic these kids are. When they heard that Jock was going to be running a coaching clinic, there wasn't even a question of, are you coming? It's about when's it going to take place. The enthusiasm of kids just to meet one of the great uh, of the game is unbelievable. And you can just see that passion from today has been unbelievable. So to Jock Cullis, thank you so much indeed to your foundation. May it go from strength to strength. And to all those people who play cricket in South Africa, just make sure the game's kept alive and played in the right spirit. Jacques is very generous with the foundation that he's given us. There are not many people who have done for their old schools as much as Jacques has done. And that's what's special about the man, is that he's remembered his roots and he's given back to the school. And, you know, people need opportunities. I and mean, South Africa is rent asunder at the moment about people paying school fee, uh, varsity fees and school fees and paying for education. And here he is giving someone the opportunity to come and learn about the game and to come to a school that will take them to the stars if that's where they want to go. So the opportunity that Jacques has given, uh, which he gives five boys every year, that is very special and very generous. Now that I've retired, I'm uh, going to spend a little bit more time with the guys um, you know, at the foundation when I go around the country to spend a little bit of time with the, the other schools as well. So um, it is still a, a massive passion of mine. Um, giving back to the game that's given me so much is, is what it's about. And um, you know, hopefully I can help some kids live their dream and, and be the cherry on top being um, you know, one of the guys coming through and, and playing for the country. It was a great honour to meet Shark and also good experience. It was wonderful to meet him, wonderful to, wonderful to see him. It's awesome, he's an awesome coach and an awesome cricket player. It was a great experience, it was a privilege. I know many people would like to be in my position right now. So hopefully, that I, I hope that I took everything in to my mind and I hopefully I can apply those skills in my cricket pitch. Weinberg Boys High and the cricket community showed their appreciation for all he's done for the game. Oh, it's a fantastic honour, um, you know, to get a, a cricket field named after you at the school that you went to is, is a magnificent honour and then for the school to, to put, on a, put on a tribute dinner, it, it certainly is very humbling. Um, but it's also nice to know, you know, I played this game firstly obviously because, um, you know, I enjoyed it and I had a passion for it and, um, you know, people love watched it, watching it, so hopefully I entertained the people over the years and gave them a few things to smile about and, and having dinners like this just sh shows that I, you know, I played the game hard but in the, in the right way. Um, and it's nice that they're, they're giving back something to me, um, even though I really didn't expect it. Um, but I'm humbled by it and, and really looking forward to it. I'm sure it's going to be a fun evening. And fun it was. The evening was full of laughter as friends, family and mentors shared anecdotes and memorable tales about one of South Africa's greatest cricketers. In a special twist, the organisers had lined up a number of surprise guests to share in the evening, much to the delight of the legend himself. Well, firstly, obviously, what springs to mind is the greatest all-rounder that, one of the greatest all-rounders that God put breath into. Let's not say the greatest because there's all sorts of debate, but in my mind, he is. But the other thing that springs to mind is I'm a lot older than him, and we now play golf together because we're a member of the same golf club at Fan Court. And I call him the silent assassin because he's a quiet man and we'll play golf and we'll be sitting in a group and then all of a sudden a tray, 25 shooters will arrive and just a smile on his face we know where it came from, the silent assassin. It's quite an interesting story in that you, I signed him up to play for Glamour and we were playing at Somerset and um, the rain, there's a big rainstorm coming in and him and a senior player of um, 
Captain Morgan, the Captain Matthew Maynard was a very good friend of mine as well. Um, they decided to obviously go on a night out and uh, they had a heavy night thinking the, gra the rain would wash out the game. The next morning in the changing room I saw these two individual senior players with red eyes and looking worse for wear. And I said, right guys, rain's out but we're going out to do a training session now and I put them through an exercise where it was a, it's called a 10 catch exercise where you've got to catch 10 catches that I hit. But the last I saw them was on all fours, sort of near the boundary boards, sort of gagging, sort of <laughs> struggling to recover. But you know, that's the, the man Jock is. He realized that I'd put him under pressure and he just went and did the, the, the full exercise. We were playing in the Lancashire League. Jock was playing in the Northern Lancashire League in, in 1994. Um, and the South African cricket side was over in England. And we were asked by the manager, an old uh, Weinberg old boy, uh, Fritz Bing, to come down from the, the Lancashire League down to London, down to Lords, to come and bowl to the to the Springer uh, or to the Proteus. Um, phone Jacques up and when he got to pick him up, he was playing for a club called Netherfield. And it took us about seven hours to get down to London to get and bowl to the Proteus. We arrived and the, the practice was over. And uh, we ended up having to phone a few mates to go and sleep. Um, we were left in the lurch down in London, nowhere to stay. Um, and it was quite crazy that we went down there to go and bowl to the, to the Proteas. That was in 1994 and the next year Jacques Callis was playing with the guys. Here we were sleeping on the streets of London and the next year he was playing for the Proteas. So it was quite an ironic story. My brother was very disappointed that he was going to have a sister one day. So he took full advantage of that and um, just brought out all the sort of boy things in, in me. Um, I remember fond memories of playing all, all kind of sports with him as a young girl. Toilet roll rugby, we'd um, insulate toilet rolls and we'd play together and you know he'd make the rules and I'd allow, to, for tackling, I just had to touch him. Whereas he was allowed to really full on tackle me. You know everyone just sees him as a celebrity and He's amazing as he is, but he just was a really normal kid growing up, um, and I really cherish those kind of memories. I think, well, probably one of the stories I can tell, which is um, a bit of fun. So, Jacques used to, in his mid 20s, used to come over to our place all the time, and we'd, uh, myself and my folks would be, hey, Jacques, when are you going to get married? When are you going to get married? When are you going to get married? We had this little bird, this canary, in the cage, and he looked at it one day and he said, when the canary falls off that cage, or falls off that perch, that's it. He came in one day and my poor canary was there. He said, I'll buy you another one. It's phenomenal to see a, you know, a friend of yours, you know, where you see the guy train so hard and, and he's in the nets every single day with his old man, um, you know, and, and get the success that he achieved. You know, he really deserved it. And, uh, you know, we as Wymac boys are really proud of him and uh, we've supported him all the way through. And uh, you know, just to see the huge success that he had, you know, it's just all that hard work that he had put in, you know, that early stages with his father really came, came right at the end. And just watching him back, he was he was phenomenal, you know. For, for a young lad of that age, you know, he, he was without a doubt straight ahead of anything I'd seen. When I played cricket, you know, he was a straight ahead. He was just so good. We recognised his talent oh, from the first moment, really. Um, he scored 87 on, on our ground and uh, finished the season. He had to go home to, to go on some uh, overseas tour in July, but at that time he left with an average of 98.8. Phenomenal. I'll never forget when he arrived on that first day and he went into the net and kind of we knew straight away this is uh, something special that's brewing here. Well, I have so many memories because I think I must have broadcasted on most of his test matches around the world. Uh, but the one I'll always remember is I was lucky enough. We always love as broadcasters, we like to be on air when milestones are passed and be the guy who has to describe it. And I was lucky enough to be the guy that was on air when he got his dreaded double hundred, which he'd been waiting for and waiting for and waiting for against India at Centurion. And uh, that was emotional times. And I'm sitting there trying to describe what's going on. I've got tears pouring down my face. That's it. South Africa's superstar. Wonderful memories, wonderful player, wonderful guy, humble, and uh, yeah, I, th I think to have been as great as he, he has been or is, to be that humble must be very difficult. He does it very well. You know, for a man who's had all that success, 
still has remained the same Jacques Cullis that I knew when he was at Weinberg, at Western Province Cricket, and at times when I've been involved with South Africa. He's never seemed to have changed. I think that's a tremendous attribute. I think it's good that the, the school and uh, the old boys and the foundation is, is honouring his, his work because he has done a lot for this country, for the school, and, and obviously for his foundation. So I think it's, it's a really good thing. Um, yeah, it was a fantastic sort of hour and a half, two hours where I could reminisce and um, uh, great to see, you know, so many of my, my friends coming here and, um, you know, Weinberg old boys and, and, and Weinberg guys and um, just having a fun time together, listening to a few stories. Um, you know, I certainly didn't ever expect anything like this. Uh, I'm very fortunate enough to be to be honoured like this and for so many people to, to come and attend and, and honour one person like that. Um, you know, words can't describe how, how grateful I am and, and how much that means to me.